Hello and welcome to another episode on how to film and edit a product video at home. Now the video you just saw at the beginning was entirely shot and edit on the iPhone 12 Pro Max. If you guys have been following me for a while now, you know that I like to shoot product videos at home on my iPhone. The quality you get out of it is just amazing, especially with the new iPhone 12 Pro Max. Now in this video, I will show you how I use the iPhone 12 Pro Max to film this short perfume commercial and show you the editing process behind it using LumaFusion. For the product video, I've set up a gray backdrop. To remove the wrinkles, I had to steam iron the backdrop and tighten it using clamps and gaffer tape. Having a backdrop made out of cotton definitely takes more time and I would suggest you get a backdrop made out of paper. It's a bit pricier, but you'll save time and get better results. By the way, all the products mentioned will be in the video description below. I then used the sideboard and placed it a bit further away from the background. This way I can create more depth and have the object in focus and the background out of focus. It also keeps the background darker and makes wrinkles look less obvious. Now for the product, I placed a black acrylic backdrop to the bottom. It creates a reflection that gives the product more depth. Important is to clean the surface using glass cleaner to remove fingerprints and get rid of dust particles because these can quickly become noticeable in the shot. Below, I added a motorized turntable to create some movement. You could also use a cheap turntable from Ikea that would work too. To set up the camera, I used a basic tripod and mounted the Slypod E since it extends and allows me to position the camera more easily. You don't necessarily need one, but for this setup, it worked really well and I can use the app to control it. To mount the iPhone, I used a tripod adapter and positioned the iPhone upside down that allows me to easily slide with the camera in and out. To create these cinematic lighting effects, I'll be using the TL60 tube lights, which Godox was friendly enough to send me. One of the great features is that you're able to control the light using the Godox light app. So when opening up the app, I can actually control the lights remotely, which makes it really convenient to use. I can change color temperature, the tint, adjust the intensity of the light. There are also different lighting modes available. So I can create a special lighting effect such as laser, flash, RGB cycle, and also select a specific color for creative purpose. In most of the shots, I set the color to blue since it looks great and I wanted to bring out more of that color in the product. In the behind the scenes section, I will show you how I used these lights. As for the camera settings, I will be using Filmic Pro since this allows me to have full control over my camera. Opening it up in the settings, I will set my resolution to 4K that allows me to crop and correct my composition. Another benefit that I'm able to create is a digital zoom in without any quality loss since I will be exporting the project in 1080p. The encoding rate is set to 10 bit that captures more information resulting in a higher image quality. For the frame rate, I will set it to 25 frames per second since I live in a PAL region. If you live in an NTSC country, you can use 24 frames per second. These frame rates will give you cinematic results. Since I won't be using the audio, I will turn it off. For the entire video, Video, I will be using the wide lens since it has an aperture of 1.6 that separates the object better from the background. Image stabilization is turned off since I will go for static shots mostly. I leave the guidelines enabled for setting my composition. With the square, I can set my focus. When using autofocus, it's important that the object is well lit so that the autofocus can work accurately. Since I will be moving the light in most of the shots, I first position the object, set my focus, Focus using enough light and lock it. This way, no changes will occur. Next is to tap hold the circle to open up the exposure controls. I set my ISO to its lowest number to avoid noise in my image. Since I will be shooting in 4K 25 frames per second, my shutter speed is set to 1 over 50 of a second. Next is to set and lock my white balance. I have created a preset in which the temperature is set to 5600 Kelvin. The tint is set to 10 because I want to reduce some of the greenish color cast. If you have a hard time setting your white balance, you can go with the auto function. Just make sure to lock it to prevent color shifts. The picture profile is set to natural. 
I could use log v3, but it would create a very flat and desaturated image, which makes it hard for me to see what I'm actually shooting. Last, I will tap on the timecode to reveal the histogram to better analyze the exposure in my image. To have better control over the lighting situation, I lower the curtains to make the room pitch black. So let's now move on to the behind the scenes where I will give you five tips on how to shoot a product video creatively. So tip number one is to light for reflections. So for the first shot, I've placed the light on the opposite side and positioned it in a way so that the light would reflect off the object. Since a product is so translucent, you really have to think about where to position the light. What's great about using the tube lights is that it's mobile and can be placed on a flat surface without having it fall. Work around the object and look for reflections. This gives the product more structure and depth. I have set both lights to blue to bring out the blue colors of the product. I then use the app to turn each light on to create this light revealing effect. Tip number two is to use your laptop screen as a backdrop. For the second shot, I used the screen of the MacBook Pro as a backdrop. On our grid, I searched for a water splash, downloaded it, then placed the object in the center and played the video as a loop. I used one of the tube lights, which was set to daylight temperature to light it from the front to make the logo more visible. This setup worked pretty well since the object was translucent and made it look realistic. So no need for you to film a water splash, you can also use stock footage for that. If you're interested, I have a link below where you will additionally get two months for free. Tip number three is to use backlighting. Backlighting the product makes it pop more and makes it feel more three-dimensional and also directs the viewer to the product. So in this shot, I went a bit further and made the lights visible in the shot. I swung it behind the object, which I thought gave it an interesting look. Now, when shining light directly to the camera, it creates these lens flares, which I thought looked good. Tip number four is to add movement. For the fourth shot, I used a motorized turntable so that the object would rotate. It's important to add movement when shooting products because it makes it look more interesting. What I also like to do is create a digital zoom in in post since I shot it in 4K, which we'll get into later. Again, I did some back lighting and you will notice some dust particles flowing in the air, which wasn't my intention, but I took it in the shot because it created more depth and sort of gave it a magical feel to it. Now you can create movement in different ways. It doesn't have to be using just a turntable. You can also add movement using lights. Which leads me to my last tip, which is using light for movement. For the last shot, I wanted to create a revealing shot of the whole product. For this, I used one tube light, positioned it above the object and slowly twisted it with my hands to create a revealing lighting effect. I wanted to make sure to highlight all of the areas of the product as an ending shot. Okay, folks, I'm now gonna show you how I edit the video in LumaFusion. And if you're not familiar with LumaFusion, uh, it's an advanced editing app that is unfortunately only available for iOS users. For one-time payment of $30, you get access to all of its features. I personally like to use LumaFusion when I edit on the go, just because the interface is so intuitive and there are also a lot of advanced functions in it. Now, if you're an Android user, you might want to take a look at InShot, which is also a great editing mobile app that you can download for free. And it also offers a lot of great editing tools, but is limited. With LumaFusion, I just have more advanced features. The video files are in the video description below that you can download if you wanna follow along. If you're wondering about this setup, I have the iPhone 12 Pro Max attached on a mini tripod using the Light Chaser Pro. Um, I actually created a video a week ago about this, so make sure to check that out if you haven't seen it. And on top, I have a microphone which is connected to the Sony a7S III so that you guys can hear me clearly. And the reason why I've set it up this way is because I can use my mouse and it's easier for me to demonstrate when doing a screen recording because I have the pointer and can show you exactly what I did. So let's now hop into LumaFusion. So I already edited the video and I'm gonna play it back for you so that you can see how I've done it.
So this is not gonna be an in-depth tutorial on Luma Fusion. I'm just gonna really show you how I've edited the product video uh, so that you can use it to your advantage. So I'm first gonna create a new project. I'm gonna press on this icon and then press the plus sign over here. And I'm gonna name my project tutorial, okay? And then my frame rate will be 25 frames per second. The aspect ratio is 16 by nine and the color space is 10 bit rec 709. Once I've did that, I'm gonna hit the plus button and we're gonna start off with a clean project. Now there are different ways to import your footage into Luma Fusion. The way how I did it is I saved the videos onto my camera roll and created an album named uh, product video so that everything is organized. So you just head over up here, select photos. So in here, you can go to albums. And in here I have product video with those five footages. And the next thing I do is I select the clip and I trim it to just take out the best parts. I think that looks great. Once I have that, I can drag the footage onto the timeline. So I'm gonna select the shot over here. And again, I'm gonna select the best portion. I think this looks awesome. So you'll notice that the footage is upside down and I can easily change that by double tapping on the clip. And I'm gonna head over to the transition tool over here and I'm just gonna flip it, boom. What I'm also gonna do is frame it. Since I shot it in 4K, I can also crop in a bit like so. And I'm also gonna set the horizon because that is off too. I'm gonna head to the rotation and I'm just gonna click on the arrow like, like this. And I think this looks good. This is how it looks like. Looks pretty nice, right? And I'm gonna do that for the other clips as well. I'm gonna flip and just correct the horizon and composition. So now we're gonna add some music and I actually downloaded the music from Artlist and then shared it so that I can find it in the shared folder in LumaFusion. So this will be the song we're gonna use. All right, I'm gonna drag it below the primary clip. So once you have your song, you want to edit the video to the beat. Trim this a little bit more. Actually, as the lights come in, I actually wanted to fit it with the music. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna um, increase the speed a little bit. I think by one over 50. Works great. And here's another beat cut to a little bit more. Again. And then over here, I'm gonna cut it to reveal the ending. And I'm actually gonna cut the song right over here. So I'm gonna hit the scissor and the trash can and shorten this clip over here. So the next thing I wanna do is add a fade out in the music. I'm gonna hit the plus button and then select transition. And this is gonna create a nice, smooth fade out. 
So it actually looks really great already. And what I wanna do next is to add movement in my shot. And the way to do that is I'm gonna double click on the clip, head over to the transform tool. And in here, I can create a keyframe. So I'm gonna start off here, set a keyframe, and then I'm gonna go all the way back and then zoom in all the way. And once I'm done, I hit the back arrow and, and now you can see that it's zooming in. A little bit too fast for my taste, so I'm gonna head back and just position the point over here and then pull back a little. See how it looks? Much better. And I'm gonna do that for the other clips as well. So for the last clip, I don't want to add a push-in shot till the end. I actually wanna make it stop at one point. So, so I'm gonna hit the keyframe button and I'm gonna create the movement until the logo is revealed around here and then it's gonna stop. So I'm now gonna create a title at the end. I'm gonna hit the plus button and then overlay title. And I'm gonna shorten it and I'm gonna double click on it. And in here I can select my title and I'm actually gonna name it David Dov. Below cool water, okay? So I'm now gonna change the font. I'm gonna go over here. So once I have it, I'm gonna reposition it and I'm gonna create a fade in and that's it. And to create a fade in, move the playhead over here and then hit the plus button and then transition. So let's see how that looks like. Looks pretty nice. So for my last step, I'm gonna color grade each clip. So for this clip, I'm gonna head over to the effects and colors and I'm gonna select original and I'm just gonna pull up the midtones like that and maybe add a little bit of contrast, not too much, just a little bit and then increase the saturation a bit. And what I also like to do is create a vignette. And I can add over to the effects over here and then you can select three different vignette. I'm actually gonna go for vignette number two. So this looks really nice and I'm gonna color grade the other clips as well. So to export the video, head over to this icon over here, go to movies and then select photos. So it will be saved to our camera roll. For the resolution, we're gonna export it in 1080p. The frame rate is set to 25 frames per second and the video quality is set to standard 20 megabits per second, which is great for uploading videos onto the web. Below you can see the estimate file size that you will be exporting. Everything else I leave how it is and I'm gonna click on the upper right icon to export the video. So yeah, that is basically it. We now have a nice product video shot and edited on the iPhone 12 Pro Max.
As you can see, you don't have to have a huge setup to create a nice product video. Start off with what you have and use the things laying around to create your product video. These product videos can be easily done at home and the more you practice, the better you will get at it. Important for you to keep in mind is that a product doesn't move, it doesn't do anything in fact. And that is where you have to figure out how to make the product come to life and making it engaging for the viewers to watch. Hopefully you got something out of this video. If you did, leave a like and let me know in the comments what type of product videos you like to shoot with your smartphone. If you're new to this channel, make sure to subscribe so that I can keep creating awesome videos for you guys. Make sure to follow me on Instagram at Bennett Grazer. And if you haven't downloaded my free smartphone filmmaking guide, make sure to grab one for yourself, which will help you find the right gear and help you get started filming quality videos with your smartphone. If you want to know more about mobile filmmaking, here are two popular videos that you can check out that you will certainly love. Thank you so much for watching. Stay mobile and I will see you in the next video.